What's up, everybody? It's Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of CreditRepairShop.com. And in today's video, we're going to talk about how to get a 1099-C considered a cancellation of debt. 1099-C, cancellation of debt, consideration from your original creditor. 1099-C, cancellation of debt, consideration, keyword, consideration by your original creditor. A 1099, I'm going to say it again because I don't want it to be confused with where people are talking about a 1099A or the debt is being paid from some secret bank account. I'm talking about a 1099C cancellation of debt consideration by your original creditor. Credit card company, repo, uh, 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 deficiency balance, payday loan balance anything. 1099C, cancellation of debt, consideration by your original creditor. And in this video, I will talk about one that was just recently performed by my company. And I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. I'm going to tell you the dollar amount that it was. It was actually two Still waited on doc finishing documentation from it. Um, so I need you to like this video right now. Mm, I think I deserve the likes because this is going to be an excellent video. You need to uh, share this video once you go, th you know, watch the video and you need to hit that notification bell. This is real information. This is not fake information. This is not how to do a 1099C uh, where I just watched someone else's video or looked at something on, on Google and came up with a video. This is real stuff that we do here at the credit repair shop. And I'm going to tell you exactly how you can do it. The goal is to get a 1099 C cancellation of debt from your original creditor because you are struggling financially. And that is a key word that you are struggling financially. Before I get into that, I'm going to make you listen to me for something because if you're here on my channel and uh, I, I made a promise when I started my channel that it was going to be different. It, it's not going to be the same old, same old like other companies. And as a matter of fact, I think I figured out exactly why some of my videos do not just shoot up even though they're the most informative real life videos that are on YouTube about these subjects with credit and debt. It's because I don't give you the dopamine in your brain. I don't give you that high that uh, other videos that talk about, hey, let's just go get a loan on something. Let's just go get this credit card. Let's just go, let's do this credit card hack. Let's do all of this stuff, which I'm not saying that that stuff is not in our uh, in environment, not in our atmosphere. Um, you know, it, that's, but that's not where most people are at. Most people have done stuff and they're in trouble and they're trying to seek ways to get this trouble off of their shoulders so they can get back to a level of comfort for their family, for themselves, to be able to move forward and hopefully not make the same mistakes again. So when I was thinking about constructing this video about helping you potentially get a 1099C cancellation of debt consideration with your original creditor, the first one of the first things that came to my mind is that most people, you listening to me, you listening to me, is that you're not going to do anything that you don't feel like doing. And I, that's why I talk about the dopamine feeling is that I can give you credible information. I can give you instruction. I can tell you exactly how we do it. I can tell you exactly how to do it. But you will not do anything that you don't feel like doing. You will not do anything, even if it is good for you. Even if it is good for you, you will not do what you don't feel like doing. How many times have you woken up in the morning and say, I don't feel like getting out of bed and you've been sleeping all night? How many times have you had to go to work? You say, I don't feel like going to work, but you still had to go to work. And that you go to work because you know that there's an end result. It, you could either lose your job or you're going to get paid for going to work. So you will do what you don't feel like to go to work, but you will barely do anything for yourself 
that you don't feel like doing. And this is very important. I bring this up. This is so, so important. This is why people fail. This is why people only do things that get them some type of hyped up high in their mind. And they don't take action on things that will actually do things to change their lives. But you'll go to school for four years to go to college. You'll go to school for 12 years and all of that stuff is good. But when it goes to taking care of your life, you think that things have to be like Jack in the Box if you live on the, on the West Coast or like Chick-fil-A East Coast and in my area like McDonald's. Like you, you got to come in there, you got to order it, and it has to happen for you instantly. And if it don't happen for you instantly, you don't even believe in yourself. You don't believe in your ability because you say it don't feel right. It don't feel good. And let me tell you, the reason why it don't feel good is because you don't even know nothing about how a process is supposed to work. So your mind is scrambled and you link on to things. And the number one thing you're going to link on is your feeling. Like you will, you won't even watch the, the rest of this video, even though I'm about to tell you how you could potentially get your 1099C cancellation of debt considered by your original creditor. If you don't even feel like I'm going to give you the information, you will not even watch this video, even though this stuff can work for you. And I got proof right here for a client. And I got proof on my video, on my uh, website too. But you won't do it because you don't feel, you don't feel, you're not going to do nothing that you don't feel like. You believe in miracles, you believe in miracles, and you don't know how miracles happen, but when it happens, all of a sudden, you're like, oh, it was a miracle. You believe in the universe, you say, well, the universe brought it to me, I was thinking it. You didn't ask how that happened, but you accepted it. But something that instruction that you're given, you you won't do it because you don't feel like either it can work or you don't feel like doing it because you think you got to know everything about the outcome, about how it's going to work, what's going to happen when it's in someone's hand and they're reading it. You got to know all of that, but you believe in miracles. You got to do all of that, but you believe in the universe. Something that I'm having put on my wall here, they're, they're, I already uh, got it uh, put together. I just don't know how I'm going to have it constructed it's going to say every time i walk into my office it's going to say i believe in myself that that's the best thing that could be right there on my wall i believe in myself because there's a lot of people a lot of you are not believing in yourself a lot of you you think you believe in yourself but you do the opposite uh i say this a lot when uh uh or I, I'll, I'll pick on myself uh, with my grandchildren, my, my wife and my, my uh, daughter, they'll say, well, you know, you say you're doing this with, with our grandsons on so they can mind and listen all that. But what you're actually doing is you're doing the opposite with your actions. And so I had to tighten up on that. And what, guess what happened? When I tightened up on that, they tightened up. My grandkids, they got started gradually getting better because I figured out that I was the problem. And the reason why I wasn't doing it is because I wasn't feeling good that I would have to be more demanding on my grandsons because they can get out of control. I didn't feel like making them feel like I was trying to get them to do something. But it was better for them to, for me, number one, to do it because it, 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 at least they wasn't just running wild. And then number two, it's better for them because they understand. So we have a 1099C. 1099C4 client. Let me get here. This is a huge, huge file. And I can say for this client that this client was very unappreciative of what we did. Because if you think about it, if you come to us and you have debts you have debts upwards of $40,000. I don't want to show. You see that? that those there are United States certified receipts to the creditors. That's what those are. We provide those when we do this for our clients. That goes directly to the creditors. When you have a debt. Okay, here's the, here's the debt. Here's the debt. 
over $40,000, but when you erase with a 1099C, $9,549, we're not talking about just on credit reports, we're talking about where they're going to do a 1099C cancellation of debt, plus $11,821, $21,370, so out of the 40-some thousand dollars, a 1099C on $21,370. On a 1099C cancellation of debt. We do not promise that a company will take the 1099C cancellation of debt consideration, but you, you can't get anything unless you offer it and you uh, you submit it. And that goes again into, well, do do some people don't even do it because they don't even feel like the, pers the company is going to even consider it. Your job is not to have the company consider it. Your job is to Present it to the company. Your job is not to get them to say yes or no. Your job is to present the information to them to consider it. That is what you have to do. But most people won't do it because they start to get the feeling that this person or this company, they're not going to do it. That is a feeling that is working against you. And that's a feeling that will make you not take any action to get anything done. As I've said in other videos, and I'll say it again in this video, to get a 1099C cancellation of debt consideration, the most likely way that one will be considered is to express a medical and financial hardship. And even if you don't have a medical hardship and you express a financial hardship, you will still be opening up the door to potential settlements that could be deeply uh, favorable to you very favorable. We've had several that were very, very favorable. And then you have to put yourself into the mindset of following through with that favorable settlement offer that gets that debt off of your back. Remember what I said, keep, I want you to think about this. Whenever you have problems following through on something or even thinking about doing something for yourself that you know will help you, you need to understand that sometimes you're going to have to do things even though you don't feel like it to be able to get the end result. I talk about my mentor, Marshall Silver, who is a the world's most famous hypnotist, and then Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is the, what it, at one time was the world's greatest bodybuilder. And I just uh, had a uh, picture taken with Ronnie Coleman, who was another one of the world's greatest bodybuilders. And what they all three said is that they said that you have to do the things that the time that you get the most out of life is when you do it when you don't feel like it. See, you go to work, even though you don't feel like it, but you got paid. If you didn't go to work and you didn't get paid or you didn't have any more sick time, you would lose. So you push yourself in that situation. But all the other situations that will change your life, like if you could do 1% better on things that you didn't want to do, that you didn't feel like doing, 1% over time would literally change your life. But you still believe in those miracles, but you don't believe enough in yourself. So for medical, this one, this one here was a combined medical and financial hardship, and I said it was twenty twenty one thousand three hundred seventy dollars uh, debt that will be in a ten ninety nine C, and there was an added benefit where this information actually came off of the individual's credit reports at the same time. We don't even be asking for that at that point. We're just trying to get the relief of the individual with the debt that's over their head. This individual had severe medical financial hardship. So in the letter, what you do is you put your information, your uh, last four, your social, your date of birth, so they can identify who you are. You put a list of your creditors, and you don't need to disclose all of the account numbers, but they need to know that it's just not them that you're dealing with. This puts in their mind, Okay, it's not just us. We got a whole group here. There's some psychology behind that, but I won't even get into it in this video. 
And then you need to be direct. You don't need to make it woe is me. You just need to explain to them exactly what is happening to you. But you have to construct that in a way that they understand that this information that you're giving them is true. So if you're if you're suffering a financial a, a medical and financial hardship, you need to describe in detail the medical hardship. You don't need to go into too much detail about what it, you, like medical procedures and all that type of stuff. But you de do need to let them get an, a full idea of what you're going through. And they might, in some cases, say, it, well, if you can prove that with some uh, in a letter from your doctor or something like that, we've had that happen, then you need to provide that. And then that would, you know, you, you, you know that you're getting somewhere. So you express your medical hardship. And then when you, you then express your financial hardship, and this could be dependence, this could be job status, job loss, it could be anything that paints the picture of true picture, not anything false of what you went through that got you to the point to where you cannot pay that creditor. It's it's that basic. And you want to you want to remind them also, and this is something that I've that I've that uh people don't seem to take into account is that if you were always paying that creditor and then all of a sudden things just dropped and you just wasn't able to pay them, they would like to know what happened to make that happen. They would want to know, okay, you were doing so good and then this happened. So now the whole picture is starting to come together. So when I could pay you, I was paying you. It wasn't because I was just going out there getting a whole bunch of more credit cards and doing all types of crazy things. I'm showing you medically what happened to me. And I'm showing you that I'm just not going to be able to recover. That is a key thing when do, doing a 1099C cancellation debt consideration. That you have to show them everything. You have to show them what's going on medically. You got to show them what happened financially. You have to paint a complete picture of what they're gonna of, of of your situation, and then you have to be upfront and honest. And this is where a lot of people have trouble because you don't want to seem weak when you're weak. This is something that is that is innate in us as humans. Is that even if we're weak, we want to seem strong, and you should say that you're strong, even though you you might be feeling weak. This is why people will pretend to have money when they don't have money because they want to look strong. They want to look like they're doing well. But there comes a time that you're going to have to be honest with your situation, with yourself. You have the mindset that things can get better, but you're going to have to be honest and upfront with your situation. You got to put that information into your 1099C to let them know that you, with your situation, if you have a, uh, extreme medical issues where you're not going to even be able to be able to work the same way that you used to work, then that's going to need to be placed into your 1099C cancellation of debt for consideration. And then this is the part where uh, you're going to submit this information, construct your letter to them, certify it to each of the creditors, and let them make the decision. It goes into their hands, and some creditors may just be flat out no no response. Well, they're going to all respond. They're going to all respond. Even if they're going to say no, they're going to respond to try to work out something with you. That, that's just going to be their mode of what they're going to do. But they may not respond and they may do the 1099C and you may not find out until later. Don't ask me why they don't uh, tell people. I don't know why. There's been people that we've done this for and people who we, you know, just came to us and said they received a 1099C for a debt that's on their credit reports and they didn't even know about it. So the, the, I don't get into the reasons behind what's going on in their offices. I just know that they get considered. I don't even know why they consider some over others. This one here for over 20 something thousand dollars. And I've seen other ones that didn't get considered and it was only a couple of thousand dollars. I do not know and I do not, I don't bother my brain cells worrying about why they 
uh, give someone a 1099-C and they don't give someone a 1099-C because that goes back into the feeling of if you feel that they're not going to treat you the same way that they treat someone else the same, the, 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 the way that they treat someone else, then it may make you feel like you're not going to even try to get this accomplished. And that would be the wrong mindset from the outset. So, in review, and you should watch this video again, but basically to get a 1099-C cancellation of debt consideration to your creditors, and you have an extreme medical hardship, you explain the, you, you put your information, last four your Social Security, date of birth, you date it, you let them know that this is a medical and financial hardship letter. You list all of the creditors that you're going to be sending this to, and you want to let each creditor know who you, you know, that, that it's not just them, that it's other creditors. You express your hardship, why this letter is being written. You, you communicate to them so they know that you're not running. You tell them exactly what you're going through medically. You tell them exactly what you're going through financially. You, you remind them that you did always pay your debts. And then you, in closing, you put in there that you're not going to be able to pay this debt due to whatever your circumstances end up being medically. If it's, if you don't have any medical issues, then you're doing this on a financial level. Uh, more than likely, they're going to contact you to do some sort of arrangements. They're going to say, well, do you ex anticipate a time that you're going to get on your feet? And if that anticipation still, uh, that time frame is not anytime soon, and you don't even expect that you're going to be able to replace the income that you lost, they could potentially look at doing a 1099-C cancellation of debt on, on that debt. So again, keep in mind when you're doing something to never let how you're feeling if you're feeling bad, if you're feeling good about doing something, then you keep that feeling. But if you're not feeling good, if you're not feeling good, don't let not feeling good stop you from taking action on something. Because most of the things that you're going to create in your life that are going to make a real difference are going to be the things that you do when you didn't feel like it, not the things that you do when you do feel like it. And dealing with debt, dealing with uh, issues like this. Even when you're drafting your letter, you're not going to be feeling too good because you're going to have an innate, in, 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 I'm not sure if I'm using the right word, an inert feeling inside of you, especially, especially if you have a personality like mine, is that you're going to be making yourself where you want to feel good. Like I don't, even if I don't feel good, I manipulate my feelings to feel good because I control my feelings. I don't let outside things tell me how to feel. I tell myself how to feel. I tell my body how to feel. I tell my mind what to think. And that allows me to do things when I don't feel like it and take action on it. And then that little 1% makes a whole difference in my life because when I didn't feel good, I did something. And for some of you, a lot of the times you don't feel good about anything that's going on in your life. So if you need assistance with a hardship, we'll consider, we would like to look at your information and then we would, we would let you know, uh, basically if you, you're going to have to be struggling with medical and financial to have the best shot. If you had something extreme happen to you financially, potentially, but it's going to be more in the settlement, uh, uh, settlement arena. If you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch the video, What Makes Us Different, so you can see my eight-point validation process, my two-phase settlement process. That's the way that we repair credit. We don't do it any other way. If you, if you can't follow that process, please choose another company. If you need your credit reports and scores because you need that information to be able to know what you're even, what, what mountain you have to climb. You need all of the notes. They could have already filed a 1099-C and you don't even know it because you don't have your complete credit reports. In the comments section, it could say that the debt was canceled. Can canceled debt is different than just having a debt that was written off. It could say written off and canceled. 
That means that it could be a 1099-C. What does a 1099-C say on the IRS form? It says cancellation of debt. If you look on your credit reports and it says canceled, the debt could be potentially canceled. How do you know if it's canceled? You call the IRS. You stay on the phone for a couple of hours. You don't feel like staying on the phone a couple of hours. Well, then you don't feel like finding out if this debt was canceled with a 1099-C. So go to your, the number three scores.com to grab your train, your trans union, Equifax, Experian, credit reports, and all three scores. If you have debt collectors coming after you early, grab my three-pack of letters, statute of limitations letter, debt validation letter, cease and desist, collection activities letter. That can stop debt collectors depending on what your situation is. Uh, cease and desist and debt validation work together. It's going to ask questions about the debt that they just purchased to make sure that they can fully uh, prove the claimed amount, among other things that's on that letter. It works very good. Uh, uh, statute of limitations letter, there are still debt collectors who buy debt and they try to uh, uh, get communication with you to make you pay a debt that they'll say time barred, but it's past statute of limitations. And this letter will get them to stop it and then they should not sell it to anyone. And if they do, then they will be in violation. I give you those three letters uh, for free. Link is below this video. I do ask for a donation on those. It can save you literally time, money, frustration. Thank you for your time. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, post your questions and comments. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the Thank you.